The great man, the great man, does whatever a great man can. Can he make a comic feed? Yes, he can. He just did. Watch now a video from Great Man. A video from Great Man. Great Maniacs gather. I'm back again going through some of my boxes. Uh, short box number 28. Uh, the Demon again. I went through the first couple of series of The Demon and a couple of uh, guest appearances. And uh, now we're on to series number three when I first encountered The Demon. I love this run. One of my favourite runs of all time. Had two different uh, creative teams. I think from about number 40, a new creative team comes in. The initial creative team, Alan Grant, Val Simex. Uh, I think Dennis Roddy had a, f a fair part in it as well, colouring probably. And just really fun, really fun run. You know, The Demon obviously can be played really straight and really horrific if you want they want to but in this run they they you know there's some there's some horrorness in here but mostly it's played for fun and uh yeah <laughs> love that picture love that cover i think i've got that this is the one i've got on my i think this is the one i've got on the sleeve of my jacket it's all worn out now unfortunately it's got more wear and tear but like as a, as a headbanger you got to have you know, heavy metal stuff on your jacket, so I've got all skulls on the back. But on the sleeves, I've got Etrigan on one sleeve, and I've got Martial Law and Suicider on the other sleeve. Unfortunately, they've become very worn now, though. Anyway, so Demon number one. Uh, number two. A classic demon pose on top of um, a crypt or so, of some sort. Great stories as well, really good stories. Right, Warm Hands, Cold Heart. It's got a blinking price label on the front of the plastic, which may obscure it a little bit for you. Sorry about that. Uh, Randu and uh, Glinda Marks are the names of the characters there. And uh, some guy called Batman, I think. Yeah, Batman. So is it Glinda or Glinda? I think it's Glinda, which is a bit of a weird name. But uh, she's like uh, Jason Blood's love interest for a fair old while. There's Jason Blood. Lots of angels around. <laughs> Ready, Slime? It's showtime. This issue start. This series starts off with Jason Blood in hell, and the demons manage to sort of like free himself from Jason Blood, sort of, and um, he's decided it's time to hit for him to rule hell. So there's a lot of like hellish politics and uh, facing off against his father and other demons and craziness. This this issue all singing, all dancing, music, music, music. But don't you step on my blue suede hoofs. Basically, it is what it says. Every all because Edgegan is a rhyming demon. Obviously, he's he you know his rhymes can be turned to song, and every page of this, every conversation is this is is like done in a um, to music, not to me, but it's like sung in the in the tune of, and you've got to like sing. You haven't got to sing along to it, but I chose to sing along to it because I wanted to get into the groove of the silliness, and it's uh, it's great fun. Right, this is um, I'm not sure who does this cover, but it's different to most of the others. It's a more painting kind of this is him wearing the the, fort, the horned crown of hell the prince of hell becomes king that's something that jason blood did sometimes when he had when he had the extra the demon inside him he'd purposely go into a church or sacred place so that inside him the demon would be like rifing in pain <laughs> or you know discomfort did that a fair bit right this is uh, a little off the top he's actually had the top of his head chewed he, he heals he heals from being damaged so he could be like really badly smashed to pieces but he heals because of his demon blood so this is um, a creature called a tulpa uh, Tenzul Kem I think is like um uh, of Tibetan descent, I believe, and um, these tulpas are sort of created by meditation. So uh, they're like meditation monsters from the id kind of thing, and he summons them from his his own mind to attack the demon. Ah, uh, there you go. 
<laughs> Not a surprise. That's how the demon would greet the Phantom Stranger because uh, the demon's a breathe. He's like a, he's a breathe deadly fire first, talk later kind of guy. <laughs> Lucky Phantom Stranger can uh, can stand up to Hellfire, I'm sure. Right here we have. Uh, this is the clown and the witch boy that I first saw him as. Uh, he's basically got a revenge team. He wants to kill Uncle Jason, as he calls Jason Blood, and um, and Etrigan. And so he, he pulls a team together. Kafon, I think he was called. Uh, some sort of satanic demon kind of thing. Uh, I'm not too sure the guy holding the cushion is. I don't think he's actually in this, but the cushion is uh, Harry Matthews, who is uh, one of Jason's friends who got sucked into hell, I think, at the end of the second series, and uh, was used as a cushion... Uh, for Belial, Etrigan's, Etrigan's father turned him into a cushion <laughs> and sat on him. <laughs> right, and there's obviously Tickle, Tickle Clarion's cat. Right, this is a Beasley cover. Lobo had quite a big uh, play in quite a few of the Steeman run. They would, they didn't like each other. They'd fought each other to, to, you know, smash the crap out of each other. But um, yeah, at one point it was gonna destroy the world together with uh, nuclear bombs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> some silliness, but good fun. And another time they teamed up and, and uh, went on a road trip in hell. Right, this is uh, during the not getting on period. This is when Lobo was quite big. Look, Lobo's pal, the demon Lobo's pal, versus Lobo. Surprise appearance, eh? I say surprise appearance by Lobo. And then the creative team is Alan Lobo Grant, Val Lobo Simex, and Dennis Lebeau Rodier. <laughs> I'm guessing he's Canadian or French or French Canadian. There we go. Good good fight scene. I got a poster from this one. I think on my wall, but it's kind of like fell in half over the years. Right, here they are using uh, tactical nuclear weapons <laughs> to fight each other with. Yeah. Cool stuff. Silly, very silly, but fun. All right, this is I could have used this for the explosions cover uh, cover slingers that we did. Except I wasn't in that one. I was I had to take a day off that day because I didn't have any comics with me. So Dean with a Lobo. It's a blast. It's gonna be quite a long video this one. I've got sixty odd comics to show you today. Uh, number sixteen, the region beyond. Jason Blood's obviously out of the body. Actually, I think they swapped souls, I think. So I think the demon was inside Jason Blood's body and Jason Blood's soul was in the demon's body. So this is the demon Jason in Jason Blood's body fighting Jason Blood in the demon's body. Yeah, I think they got cast out of hell after... So they were usurped from this kingship of hell. I can't remember who, by, or how. And he ends up going to this region beyond where he meets all kinds of things, including <laughs> including in the War of the Gods crossover, he meets up with uh, Wonder Woman. And as soon as he sees her, he goes and he plants a big French smack on her, on her lips and she's not happy with that, of, of course. Why would she be? So this cover, he does kiss her and she immediately punches him. Obviously she would, because you don't do that to any woman, let alone the, the Amazon princess. But the way this cover is, is told, like it's a, uh, is it gone with the wind? Frankly, my demon. <laughs> it says the uh, Rodier. So it's like Rodier did this cover on his own, I think. The more kind of arty kind of style, more painty kind of style. Well, this one I love. This one I actually made into a t-shirt. I've got it printed up as a t-shirt. Missed me, missed me, now you got to kiss me. But he, he's been fired, shot through all his arrows. So he wasn't actually missed. <laughs> but he just doesn't feel it. He's even got one right in the middle of his head. <laughs> missed me, missed me, now you got to kiss me. <laughs> oh dear. Right, this is a flashback. Free inside, a completely gratuitous Lobo poster. Uh, plus the special 32 pet. 32 page family size, utterly disgusting secret origin of the demon Etrigan. <laughs> Here is the demon Etrigan as a baby. Oh man, bask in that gloriousness. He's got a brand on his backside, which is the first thing they did when he was born. They branded him. And he was like, obviously didn't cry. Because <laughs> he's a demon, for God's sake. He doesn't care. He probably got off on the pain. Right. Beyond the battle cosmic, or words to that effect. <laughs> it's like 
possibly a slight P take at Marvel there beyond the Battle Cosmic. Uh, he's fighting to get out of this um, this alien region where he was. I can't remember what it's called, the other, other region or whatever it was I told you about a couple of minutes ago. But battling to get out. I think that was against the White Knight. I think he was charged to protect the people from, so they couldn't leave. But uh, they found a way. Right, pain, death, destruction. These are a few of my favourite things. Yeah, Lobo sticks his head in again. He did stick his head in quite a bit. But it was pretty humorous when he did. Um, Matt Wagner. Looks like he's done the whole of this one. It just says by Matt Wagner. So he must have done the right in and all the art inside this one. Right. I think last video I mentioned this. Uh, the Robin becomes a howler. The demon versus Robin, the boy monster. <laughs> there he is as a howler. His costume's all ripped up and he seems to have got the drop on Etrigan. Right. Luckily, Glinda... Oh, it is Glenda. Luckily, Glenda marks... Uh, yeah, the mark of Glenda. The demon has to la vista hair bag. <laughs> there's Batman, Robin and Demon all on the ground and Jason Blood's love interest is basically there with a massive weapon sh uh, shooting up all the howlers right this is a really cool cover as well C-Max and Kessel love the look of that one love the, the blackness of the hands the white bulb in the middle he's obviously about to fire a, a potent power blast of some description a potent bolt of demonic energy this is a story which is always good to revisit. Political asylum, demon, demon for president, Etrigan for the White House. You know it makes sense. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Who wouldn't vote? Who wouldn't vote for that face? Kissing babies, you know, tough on all sorts of stuff. <laughs> uh, Vote for me, Demon first. This is in 92. Yeah. I'm not going to make any political aspersions whilst looking at this. Anyway, the demon misquotes Superman. Political, so yeah, he, he makes it sound like Superman's endorsing him for the presidency. And as you can tell, Superman is not too impressed. Superman tries to keep it apolitical. He doesn't like to, you know, take sides, not openly, not you know, he likes to keep neutral. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Super Demon's carving his own face onto uh, onto Mount Rushmore. <laughs> right, the last part of uh, Political Asylum. Ex executive action. Right. Here's the demon Astaroth. He was like another contender for Hell's like kingship. He got um, sent out of Hell. He's working in a, in a gas station in Gotham, I think. <laughs> and then he becomes a, a, a crime lord. Uh, Hell on Wheels plus a fragging special guest star. Can you tell who it is? I think this might be when they go through their... Um, the hell trip, the hell road trip. Right, and this one, the demon versus various Wonder Women. What happened, there's this demonic book that was found by this um, janitor. I can't remember where it was left, but it was found by the, just the janitor and he'd created his own little happy realm where he was being waited on hand and foot and whatever else, whatever other appendage you wanted by all these fake Wonder Women. <laughs> so you're, like, you're like a harem of Wonder Women that he created magically for himself. You know, you can't blame him. <laughs> Who knows what you'd use your magic for if, if you got it. But that's, you know, that's not that's not that low on the list of what I'd do, probably. <laughs> right, the demon and Lobo when Bastiches clash. Once more, getting it on. Following the uh, Marquis of Queensbury rules, of course. All right, Rodier again. I thought he was from the style. There's Lobo, Demon, and Harry Matthews, the cushion. <laughs> uh, yeah, Harry and um, Lobo are smoking cigars and breathing out smoke, and Demon's just breathing out smoke because he can, because <laughs> he can breathe fire. 
All right, get your kicks on Route 666. Yeah, this is when they go on their hellish road trip. Lobo, Demon, Harry Matthews, and I can't remember the name of the, the bullhead demon uh, from this story. Oh, never mind. All right, fighting some kind of dragon lizard, lava living dragon lizard serpent. Obviously a demon from hell. Yave Demonicus Etrigan, Fragus Bastic. <laughs> this is probably Lucifer, the fallen angel, who was leading hell for quite a while. Meet the Bastiches. It's a little uh, Beatles uh, <laughs> influenced. I think that was called the thing that should not be or something like that. He's always been killed over and over and over again. But yeah, he, he gets over it. He's like a really weak demon. I think it was a really weak demon who wants, who's been doing good to try and be allowed out of hell. But he just keeps getting killed all over again. My right, old red eyes is back. His demon doing his Frank Sinatra bit. Uh, right, and then number 40, the new team comes over, takes over. Grant is out, Alan Grant is out, and Garth Ennis is in with John McRae. Totally different style. Uh, different style of humour as well, but still humorous, but in a more kind of adult-ish, kind of slightly more toilet humorish, um yeah, slightly more violent humorish kind of way, but still good, still good fun. Um I think if you ask me which one I prefer, probably the, the first part of the run, but not matching it, because I quite like Garth Ennis's humour and as as well, you know. And there's more shenanigans in hell, more fighting, more more waging war. I think uh, in this one, Etrigan decides to rally the troops of hell and wage war on heaven. This is him, reduced to a skeleton, but he, he obviously gets over it. <laughs> right, teaming up with Hitman. Hitman first emerged in uh, one of the annuals. He was created by Garth Ennis and uh, McRae. Um, and I think it's, I can't remember. I think it might be Demon Annual Number One, where the one where the um, the alien parasites who suck people's spinal fluid, uh, people with the gene, the mutagene, metagene. Sorry, if they get bitten, if they had their spinal fluid sucked, they would quite often gain powers from it. The metagene would kick in and give them powers, and that happened to Hitman. Very like McCray's art is so much more demonic and monstrous and horrific looking. The return of the haunted tank. Bit of an odd one, but why not? Weird war tales. Look at those. Skeleton Nazis. Cool cover. Uh, be all that you can be. <laughs> the demon, I think he's leading the haunted tank there. Right, here's um, like a Sam Spade uh, hard bow detective kind of the big heat that's one of those hard but is it sam spade i think it is oh mike hammer is that another one of them detective guys i can't remember now um yeah that kind of thing the big heat uh right this one i got good points with i think i got 10 points this on our cover slingers we had a, a nautical pirate themed uh cover slingers one time and i showed this one and matilda rather liked it yeah Demon as a pirate, complete with a parrot on his shoulder and a, is that a peg leg. Yeah, a peg leg. <laughs> Cutlass, all the pirateness you need. Right, number 51. Different art team though. McCray's not on this one. Alexander did the art on this one. Can't remember the stories. Oh, here's Demon Zero. 
beginning of tomorrow. Number 52. Can't remember the story so much from this this part. To be honest, I've, I've read the first part of the run more recently because I ended up buying it again because I saw it going really cheap and I thought, well, I'm not going to buy it, sod it. And then I gave it to my nephew. So I, but before I give it to my nephew, I reread it again. So I've, I've, I've read the first uh, start of the run more recently than I read the second part of the run. Right, it's like Jason Blood's got out from the demon again and he's putting him under the heel. Edge gang, get off your butt and help us. What for? We're a bunch of losers. So this is when they're having the war against heaven. And it looks like Etrigan's resigned to the defeat. <laughs> Interesting cover. You know, the old aeroplanes have like sharks' teeth drawn on them. This is a real shark tooth aeroplane. Right, number 58, Etragon. All right, yeah, that was it. That's the end. That's the very, that's why it was called Etragon. Number 58 was the last one. And then we've got number one. Number one annual is actually Eclipso. There you see Clarion's been eclipsed. He's fighting the demon. And it's actually number two, which is the Bloodlines Death Storm introducing Hitman. So it was annual number two where Hitman gets his neck bitten and uh, becomes, yeah, becomes a Hitman with just a few powers. His powers weren't really that talked about. I think he's got a bit of mind reading and like x ray vision, that kind of thing. He's, he's not really, even in his whole run, his, his powers aren't sort of discussed that much. And then the last, all right, so I've got two annuals, and then we've got Lobo and Demon Halloween. So it's uh, 1996, it's a Halloween stroke Halloween special. I think the idea was of this one is that the, the world had been uh, prophesied to be destroyed, and Lobo and Etrigan are both set out on the moon wanted to watch it wanted to watch it go down and they don't care they're not going to save they don't care the world's, the world's going to be destroyed they, you know, it doesn't bother them they're both psychopathic monsters but they end up getting into a fight of each other and end up through their fight destroying the beast that has come to come to kill the earth so you end up saving the earth uh, through their mutual hatred of each other and general willingness to get into battles uh, when they actually wanted just to go and watch the world be destroyed. But there you go. Right, so that's it for um, this video. That's uh, the whole of the sec third series of Demon, plus a couple of additional annuals and uh, special. Cheers for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave comments down below. Uh, if you've got any memories of the Demon you want to share with me, yeah, that would be cool as well. Uh, until next time. Have a great, amazing day, and may all your news be good news. Demon! Gone, gone, the form of man. Arise, the demon, it's the gun. Yahweh, Demonicus, 